Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Betfair's Racing Only Better podcast. And this is an ultra special episode because, of course, this is your Grand National preview. This is where you need to come for Grand National Day tips up at Aintree. Of course, we've been covering the three days of the Aintree Festival. This is our third and final Racing Only Better of the week, and it's our most important. We've got five races to cover that are being shown on ITV, but we will cover the other two races on the card in any other business at the end of the show. I get to do it in the company, as always, of Tony Calvin, Daryl Carter, and Brendan Duke is in today as well. So top team for a top race. This is it, boys. I'm very excited. Daryl, very quickly, do you like the National? Yeah, yeah, I love the National, yeah. Yeah, I love this meeting. So Gino's just won. I'm in great spirit. Yeah. Yeah, should just point out we're recording this on Thursday. Obviously, very hopeful that the ground is going to dry up. Weather forecast looks that way, TC. What's your guess that the National will be starting on ground-wise? Uh, it all depends how much they get tonight. Um, five and a half mil should be coming in this evening, I reckon, and there's a little bit around tomorrow, but it's a dry Saturday. And the times of the first two races suggest it is as advertised, just maybe on the soft side of heavy, uh, heavy side of soft, so... Um, yeah, soft ground, I think. Okay, well, let's get stuck straight in then, Brendan. Let's dive straight into the first race ITV will be showing at Aintree on the Saturday. It is the 120. It's your three-mile handicap hurdle, and it's the first of three extra place races. We have a few five places on offer for this, and a full field. This is it. This is a lovely little betting heat to start punters off with. Gwenny Mayboy, five to one, top of the market currently. West Balboa for that same team of Dan Skelton, five to one as well. Johnny Who in there, 11 to two. Cuthbert Dibble at six to one. Not going to go through them all because we haven't got time. Brendan, take us away, sir. Who wins the first? Yes, indeed. I, 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 as far as I know, there were 22 at the five day stage. Well, it must be very unusual for all the runners to stand there, Brendan. Okay, well, I can totally see the fab. Uh, West Balboa, six pound higher than last year. I mean, she's gone off favourite for the long walk. She's gone off favourite for a grade one. She drops into a handicap here. You can make excuses for her last couple of runs. I just thought the five to one was a fraction tight. So I thought I'd take my big swing of the day in this race with this Jeffroy. Uh, Jeffroy, <laughs> you, may re- you may remember Vanessa was second in this particular heat uh, three years ago off a mark of 143. Not going to lie, Brendan. I can hardly remember what I have for lunch. Yeah. Day, well, uh, I, I, I did cheat, to be fair. But anyway, it's been quite the journey since then. Had, had, hadn't won a race. Gets down to 120. And Laura Mong, at fair play to her, says, oh, I can get this horse into a knot to 120. Had to drop and trip down to two miles, but takes advantage of the class edge. Wins there. Backs up with a good performance in Chepstow. Then goes and beats that Quintana. I mean, I mean that's... Uh, that's uh, Quintara, should I say? I mean, that's that that's proper form. Uh, right, runs again. There was eleven lengths behind Cuthbert, the, the reopposing Cuthbert Dibble last time in Haydock, but made a couple of mistakes late on. Pulled off a front shoe. I think you can make excuses, and it's not like it's a bad run anyway for a thirty-three to one shot. We're getting an extra place here. I can definitely see this uh, running the season's best back at Aintree, and a thirty-three to one. I thought it was overpriced. Okay, Jay Foy, big shout then at 33s to kick things off from Brendan. Daryl, over to you. Do you think this is going to be, what, 42K plus in the pot for Dan Skelton and his trainer's championship? Well, I think you've got to keep West Balboa on side. She's definitely been laid out for this. She was a big eye catcher at Kempton where he prepped Katira and this horse. Uh, and, and she ran on very, very strongly at the death. If it is soft ground, I mean, I wouldn't rely too much on the opening times of, of the first day. They were very slowly run races, um, probably thinking that it is going to be attritional ground. So we'll get more information on that as we go on. But if it is soft ground, she's got a great record on soft ground. She doesn't mind at all. Obviously, a Lanzarote winner off, off, off a, a lower mark, but more than capable of this mark of 141. As Brendan said, went off five for the, uh, for the grade one at Ascot earlier this season. Lots and lots in our favour. The other one I want to keep on side as well is Momin Rao. Um, this horse won the Potemps with a good bit in hand, I thought. I really thought he won it with a good bit in hand. He was held out at the back. He was on the outside. I think he covered far more ground than, than many of the other runners in the race. And he's crossed the line, pulling an absolute car. Now, he is an absolute monkey. He's a nuisance. But if <laughs> the blinkers continue to work with him, um, I mean, I went back in hindsight. It's a wonderful thing. I went back to Chepstow run and it did look like they were prepping him for a, for a bigger target. And it looks like they've got the job done at Cheltenham. He was obviously second to appetite in the grade one here. 
He's a great one juvenile winner. The trip, you know, the trip has been the making of him. I think he wants dig in the ground. His action would suggest that. I think he's going to go very, very close in this. So I'm going to have two stabs, if you wouldn't mind. West Balboa and Mon Mimrao, because we have got that extra place. I will allow you that, Daryl, of course, my dear. And if you want to hear trainer Paul Nichols' views on Mon Morale, I did a entry preview and he goes into some detail about Mon Morale and that festival win. And of course, you'll be hearing from him on Ditch Eat Diaries as well. So stay tuned for all news from Ditch Eat across the Betfair platforms, of course. TC, who would you like to throw into the mix? Yeah, very keen on uh, on a grey here. Um, uh-huh. um one one here in October over course and distance in 2022. Presumably had a lot of problems since. I couldn't find out what the problem was. We didn't reappear until February at Ascot. Um, and he won well there. I mean, on the face of it, a £7 rise for a narrow victory is uh, was harsh. But if you go and look at what's happened to the form since, it could well be very lenient. Um, the second uh, one a handicap off six lengths on his next start. The third won a handicap by 21 lengths on his next start. The fourth won his next two starts, albeit over fences. And if you go back to the seventh, the seventh won his next start as well. So the forms wow. worked out really well. You'd think they deliberately give him time between his races, given that absence since October. Um, and the stable's in really good form. And uh, I was expecting a lot shorter than 14s here. There's some 16s knocking around in the marketplace as well, but I thought the 14s was more than acceptable. Um, yeah, I was expecting, even though it's obviously a very deep race, I was expecting maybe 10s, maybe single figures. So, yeah, on a grave for me um, has got a lot going for it. And um, like I said, the times of the first, if they were slowly on races, that means the, the ground might be even better um, than... than than advertised. So any drawing ground from now till Saturday will be in his favour. So yeah, uh, on a great, very, I like, I very much like him at the price. Okay. He's going in a potential nap for TC on, on my <laughs> note here. Um, right, TC, I'm going to stick with you, please, for the Mersey Novices hurdle. This is the two and a half mile grade one for the Novices and really interesting clash up at the top here. Brighter Days Ahead and Coldwell Potter, both 15 to 8 co-favourites currently. Brighter Days Ahead with that big reputation, got touched off at Cheltenham, of course, in the Mayor's Novice, comes here stepping up into grade one company. And then Coldwell Potter, you all know the story by now, huge price tag first run for Paul Nichols in behind you've got Jimmy DeSoy outran his prices at Cheltenham Il Atlantique being a bit of a disappointment 13 to 2 uh, those are your top few TC how are you playing this race because the two at the top just have such such different profiles in here yeah, I mean, for some reason I'm not warm to call well Potter um, I can let him go at the price brighter days ahead obviously was disappointing given all the the talk beforehand at Cheltenham, even though, you know, the winner could be very, very good and we'll find out more about him on Friday. Um, Yeah, I mean, obviously you've got the price around Tallwell Potter. You'd be actually gutted if you paid half a million for Staffordshire not. And um, two starts later, it was a 16 to one poke. I mean, it's just absolute madness, some of these things. Um, The one I came round to, and I'm not particularly happy that Patrick Mullins keeps the ride, but I think Il Il Antique, uh, it's probably worth another go. I know he finished behind the stable mate um, in the Gallagher last time, but I think that might be the strongest race there. Or, you know, they were obviously being a country mile by the winner, but the time was decent. And I think they might have regretted talking themselves out of forcing tactics that day. Um, never really got into it. Uh, even though the four or five of his rivals are four goers, I suspect they might ride him more aggressively today. And, even though that of that reading Tommy wrong form is it didn't work out in the Albert Bartlett either. Um I thought I thought the 13 to 2 Eli Atlantic uh, from an each way angle was fair. He is he is um, a point bigger elsewhere, but I thought the 13 to 2 was fair. So Eli Atlantic to me, and hopefully they'll revert to a more aggressive tactics. Okay, interesting tactical affair then. Uh Daryl, what about you in here? Yeah, I think there's a very good bet in here. I've uh, got nine runners, so we've got each way terms in our favour here. I think Jimmy DeSaul is the one to be with. He was excellent, I thought, at Cheltenham <clears throat> behind Ballyburn. Obviously, Ballyburn was the best winner of that Ballymore for the last 10 years, at least if you look at the ratings that he produced that day. 
The time of the race was brilliant. Buddy Byrne crossed the line 10 seconds quicker than Langer Dan did in the Coral Cup. But and Jimmy DeSaul was six seconds ahead of Langerdan. Like it was he was he was a clear second that day. He outran his odds. But I think he was underestimated in the market, to be quite honest, because he made his his stable debut. We know Woody Mullins has come on for the run all season, made his stable debut at Thurless in De- in uh, December, ran Asian Master very close when shaping like he needed the run at the finish. Asian Master ran a brilliant fifth in the uh in the Supreme Novices. He's gone out of Clonmel next time, absolutely hosed up. I think he's got a very unexposed profile, and I think uh, I think he's getting better. I think coming back to a flat track will suit him. I think drop drop a furlong in trip, and you can back him each way at eleven or two. I cannot, for the life of me, see him out of the three in this. So, yeah, and he's he's. A, I think he's a really good bet. Paul Townend's on. I'm surprised he's not shorter, honestly. Side note of why I don't like this horse: an ex boyfriend of mine backed him at thirty three to one each way at Cheltenham and got paid out, and I was fuming, obviously. So I just, you know. <laughs> Why did you want the bookmaker to knock him or something? Assuming <laughs> <laughs> he got paid out. <laughs> yeah. Um, John Batten on him, run away. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I don't like him, basically. But, you know, that's a, a head over, a heart overhead issue there. Yeah, yeah. And have you, I mean, have you missed out on something there? This ex boyfriend is well aware of bad each way, Vanessa, the kind of man who you could make a household budget with. I'm not saying, like, I mean, there are obviously <laughs> tensions with it. Tensions within the relationship, and I'm not saying you made you made a mistake or anything, but he he knows his onions, doesn't he? Unfortunately, he does actually know his punting onions, which is one mm. of the things that first attracted me to him. Uh, yeah, there, yeah. Were, there were many a downsides. We'll go into uh, yeah. it. In. We'll cover Probably it. Probably backed it sixteens without as well, didn't he? To really, <laughs> I'll be fuming to see if that was the case. Right, go on, Brendan. Who do you like here? Well, I mean, I like Caldwell Potter. It's a very interesting race from a tactical dimension because the the, the obvious pace is generally the rags. I, I see Tony they, they thinks they might change tactics back on Il Atlantique and maybe they will. And I feel like Cobden will want to go forward on Caldwell Potter as well. Obviously, he would have the speed if it turned into a sprint, but he's such a brilliant jumper, but in an exhibition of jumping um, in Leopardstown over Christmas, um, just a really likable horse. Like he's ordinary enough in bumpers. I mean, he's only had seven career starts, but he, he really seems to have come alive. I know you can pick holes in, in, in that Leopardstown form, and I'm inclined to believe that brighter days ahead will go off fab the way they punted. I just never stopped backing her at Cheltenham, so there's a lot of belief in her. But so I'm inclined to tip up. I don't think Caldwell Potter can be much shorter than 15 to 8, but I think 15 to 8 is a fair price. You could get bigger, just a very likable horse, loads of potential up and trip, and Cobden booked. Okay, on to the third race we go then. The 230 at Angel on Saturday over the three miles, one furlong. It's the handicap chase. We've got 13 runners heading to post, but it is an extra place race for you. Four places on offer with Betfair. And currently your favourite is Cribilli for the John Joe O'Neill team, seven to two, taking on the King of Rye Hope at five to one for Team Skelton. Again, excellent team they have for Saturday. Twig in there for Ben Pauling at six to one. Those are your top three. Three, TC, I'd like to start with you here, please, because 13 places, uh, 13 runners, but four places. Is there an each way bet in here or is it win only? Um, not sure. Um, I, the one I'm the one I like is Falco Blitz. I don't know how I'm going to play it yet because he's 16s with the sports book and he's he's 25s in a few other places, so I might just play him win only on the exchange. Um, I can't believe how big he is. To be perfectly honest with you, normally when you got horses coming in here on the on a on a roll like he is, they they wouldn't be as big as twenty fives in the wider marketplace. And and he is. I mean, I always thought he was a good ground horse when with Nicky Henderson, um, but you know he's you know, he's really blossomed for his last few starts with Eric McNamara. And like I said, he he has gone up eighteen pounds for that, although he is two pound lower in Ireland, but. At Furls and Limerick, I mean, he's absolutely gagged up on both occasions. So if the ground is drying out, given that back form with Nicky Henderson, he wouldn't worry that much. If they do get more rain at forecast tonight and tomorrow, you know, he's obviously been winning on very deep ground in Ireland. So, yeah, given given the, the back profile, I still think there's maybe some mileage in a mark of 139 given the form he's in. So, yeah, I can't really work out why he's that big. But, but it might be a, just a... 
a snobby trainer thing because well, I've never really heard of the trainer to be perfectly honest with you. But maybe Brendan will fill me in on Mr. McNamara a bit more than. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He, he, he's been a stalwart of the of the Irish racing scene. Um, trained the winner of the Paddy Power Gold Cup. Was it two two seasons ago? I think it was two seasons ago. The the the, the, the horse's name escaped me, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, a stalwart of the game. Trains down in Limerick. Sorry, TC. Was that a, was that a win or an each way bet in the end? I'll probably, given the current prices, I'll probably be looking to back in win only on the exchange. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks for that, uh, Brendan. You better take it away then. Uh, who have you found something at a bigger price here, or are you looking towards more the top of the market? Oh yeah, well, well, uh, to, to, to just briefly to, to to revert, Barry has chipped in and uh, well, well remembered that um, Eric is the sire of Derby winning jockey Emmett McNamara. Um, wow. Who, uh, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, uh, top of the market, Crabilly. Uh, just couldn't get away from this Crabilly. So I was doing my um, my prep for this, and I, I just I, I went into the racing post, and the note was didn't jump with fluency. I said, did I misremember this race? So I went back and watched it, and I think they're being very harsh on him. I thought he can be a bit low on his fences, but I mean, you need to go down to those race IQ people, obviously. But I didn't feel like he lost a lot of ground to jump, but he was a little bit unlucky at the third last. He just stumbled on landing at the wrong time. He wasn't brilliant at the second last I suppose but I thought for a novice in his first time in a big field scenario he jumped perfectly well that'll stand to him here um, you could argue that they finished in a bit of a heap and that played I'll grant you that but I'm very much of the opinion that you have to have a few pounds in hand to win a, a handicap at the Cheltenham Festival so I, 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 until the form falls asunder I'm, I'm going to believe that it was a big run he's three pounds higher here but not for the first time in his career he looked like a step up and trip would suit him I see him travelling and jumping really well here and just um, have, have, having too much class for them, the, the, the young legs of Crabilly. Seven, seven to two. There's no bargain, but I could see him going off shorter. OK. Do you agree with that, Daryl? Do you think he could go off shorter? Uh, potentially. I, I just I like him. I just couldn't find anything in the pedigree that suggests that he wants three miles. And I don't know, I suppose the trip's a slight concern me, but he, look, he's a he's a classy horse and and I, I couldn't put you off him too much, really. Um, I was looking at twig and forward plan. I'm probably going to side with forward plan. Um, the way he won at Kempton, the, the way he picked up after the second last to win there, I just it just screams like a well-handicapped horse to me. And he's improving, improving, improving. All season, he's, he's put in a bad performance each time. And... I'm hopeful that the ground might dry slightly for him because I think he's a bare horse on top of the ground, but he's got to be well handicapped off a mark of 137. His form continues to work out well at every turn and I think this nice long home straight, he, he, like, he can belt one as well, he can belt a fence, don't get me wrong, but this nice long home straight just might give him that time to really get motoring and uh, I think he's a really, really strong stay out of this trip. So forward plan. Okay. Beautiful. Let's move on, guys, to the Liverpool hurdle, grade one, the Stayers hurdle, three miles, half a furlong here. And not quite the traditional field we've seen line up in these races. Obviously, a few of these horses in this division getting older, retiring, etc. But we've got a few favourites in here. Daryl Flooring Porter, 11 to 4 off the back of that excellent run behind Tiufu at Cheltenham. Sire de Burley, been here, got the t shirt many a time before, 6 to 1. Will he get back at the age of 12? to something near his best. Crambo, 13-2, to two, out to prove that the Ascot grade one win was no fluke. Hidden Valley Lake is the chosen one for these owners at 7-1. to one. Botox has in there at 8. Um, kind of wide open, really, if you're not a Flooring Porter fan. So that's the question I'm putting to you. Are you with Flooring Porter or are you against him? No, I'd be, I'd definitely be against him. Um, I was, I was set to tip Monkfish at twenty-five to one, but that's twenty-fives has gone to tens. So, <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that that's that, Brendan's that trick start. on this show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, 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 I better not carry on with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be with Cider Burley. Um, yeah, Cider Burley. Uh -huh. This horse normally you want to catch him on his fourth start, right? You normally want to catch him on his full start. He normally needs his few runs. And I see a lot of people trying to get behind him for Cheltenham last time. But I think the actual target has been this. They had Tehipu wound up for, for Cheltenham. I think the actual target for him is, is this race. And he caught the eye running on very strongly. This will be his third start of the season. But given the time of year, uh, he comes good in the spring um, and he loves his venue. I just thought it was too eye-catching to ignore at, uh, at Cheltenham last time in the Stairs Hurdle. And if it does become uh, an attritional test, 
There won't be too many staying on as strongly as him. So, yeah, I'm not going to back him at six to one, though. I'll just put a, a, a proviso in there because I think he will get big, bigger, closer to the off. But, um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be interested in side of Burley and Monkfish if you can get 14s plus. Okay, interesting. Obviously, Team Gordon Elliott on the score sheet early in the bowl as we've just watched play out with Jerry Kalom. And this horse, I think the interesting angle with Sada Burley is he was very clear, wasn't he, Gordon, before Cheltenham that he was only just peaking him. He seems to know when he's got him pitch perfect. And it seemed like there were a few strides off before Cheltenham, whereas 100%. the lead up to this sounds much more like, no, no, he's on the right page now. He's he's all singing, all dancing. So wouldn't it be great at the age of 12, the old boy? Um, TC, I shall come to you next, please. Did you tip Crambo when he won at Ascot? Was that your selection? No, no, mm. sorry. Um. I wanted to get with strong leader here, but I was not a nine to one. I wanted a lot bigger than that. Um, side of Burley, I think I think he's very big at sixes. Um, short was nine to two elsewhere. I don't think he'll get bigger. Looking at the early exchange market, given the each way angle, I think the sixes, I don't think he'll beat that. Um, yeah, I just for the reasons Daryl said, I think he shaped really well at Cheltenham. Obviously, we know what he's what he's done here. And one of the reasons I imagine Jerry Colon went off with such a big price at, on Betfair SP is the form of the Elliott Yard. Now, if Henderson was relieved with Sergino, um, uh, Gordon Elliott must have been very relieved with uh, Jerry Colon. Uh, so, yeah, um, yeah, I, I think side of Berlo each row at sixes, um, yeah, very good. Because there's a lot of depth to the race, obviously, but I think there's about eight pounds all by all one of them just covering the lot of the field. But yeah, Cider Burley, I think, is pretty rock solid after what I was consider a very promising run in the Stayers last time. Okay. So both the boys so far, Brendan, with Cider Burley and not with Florian Porter. But are we ignoring the obvious? He is an eleven to four favourite here, clear cut favourite. Uh, yes, and uh, I, I mean, should have a tactical edge, for Vanessa. Uh, this is my concern for Sire de Burley. I thought he ran a remarkable race in, in, in the stairs hurdle, given how they crawled around. That wouldn't have suited him at all. So if, if your information is correct... And, and and he's primed for this. I, I thought he ran he ran huge at Cheltenham. Um, I'm just not so sure how strong a race the Stairs hurdle was. I mean, to you, to just blitz them. Uh, I thought. Now I know again that the race played to his strengths, being one of the speedier horses in the race. So I just thought again you could get a dawdle here, but which will soon flooring Porter granted because he'd be on the pace. Um, but I, I, I wanted to back something from, 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 from another angle. So I decided to go for this Hidden Valley Lake. It was, a, it was a very, he's very interesting. So he's going to have to run to say 160 to win here. He's currently rated 151. Now you could well argue that 151. I'm not sure exactly where they've come up with that rating for, but he is a horse with uh, a lot of untapped potential. He's only had six runs, uh, ran a big race in Clonmel. Um, uh, last year, uh, Monty Star, a horse you know, I'm a big fan of, and search for glory around him. So I, I, I rate that form. Then he, he he came out and he was he was going to go chasing. I don't really know why they shelved the chasing plans, but anyway, he came down at the second last when probably could coming off second best against Indiana Dream. But I mean that Indiana Dream, if we if, if we ever get to see him again, could be an absolute weapon. And then uh, what, what, what was impressive the last time over two and a half miles, Beacon Edge into Capo Glory behind they ran respectively in the coral cup so i mean he's he's probably got to find 10 pounds to win here but if it is a crawl he 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 had plenty of speed at, at this trip and he does have a lot of untapped potential so i thought that just about added up to seven to one being a fair price i um talking about the pace angle so my pace mac i've got just reading out here i've got boater horse prominent sham mm. question mark he has made the running before obviously dash yeah. that tends to make the running Flora. Mm. Uh, Hewick has made the running before, as has strong leader. So I don't think he'll get a dawdle. I yeah, it's, like I, I, I kind of half thought the same thing before the stairs hurdle that surely something would would, yeah. would, would would go up and take it on. It didn't happen. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, you, you might be right, which will definitely play to the strengths of Sire de Burley. Yeah. Could I just quickly right. finish, Vanessa, on um, Sire de Burley? Just say that his bet for SP, I think going back to 2021 has never been bigger than, than never been shorter than sort of like 7.0. So, and he's going to be held up. And if there is a dawdle, you're going to get a much bigger price as they set off. So it's just worth bearing that in mind. Sort of when you're making okay. your play. 
Okay, depending on how you're playing it. Okay, let's move on. The big one. This is what people are tuning in for, guys. Grand National. This is it. Can't wait. Full field of 34, obviously. Confirmed field now is pretty much as per what we expected for the last sort of 10 days or so. We've got extra places here. Six places on offer with Betfair on the sportsbook. And your market leader, Corrick Rambler, looking to back up the win in the race of last year is 5-1 to one off the back of the excellent third in the Gold Cup. I am Maximus. 7-1 to one, Irish national winner. Meeting of the Waters seems to be the fancied one for the JP contingent at 8-1. to one. Vanillier at 9-1 to one ran so well last year. Panda Boy in there at 10s. Kitty's Light sneaking in at the bottom of the weights. Big story, 11-1. to one. Mr. Incredible Willie Jump Off. Limerick Lace. I could go on and on and on. I'm not going to go through the full field. Very dull. So what we actually want is something to win, something to play, something to make our viewers and listeners money. Brendan, I am coming to you first, sir. I hope that we are on the same page here. Who oh. do you think is going to win the Grand National? I think Kitty Slide is going to win the Grand National. Are we on the same page? Sorry, no, no. Oh, okay. Well, you had a well, look at the man who was on who was on a level with me there, but you failed me. Oh, did I? Oh well. Oh, oh, okay. Well, the, the the past is history. The future is a mystery, as Mike Tyson said. So we we'll, uh, we'll just let the cards fall. Where they made so Kitty's light. I mean, you just feel like this is this has been a plan. Christian Williams, a, a, a master planner, uh, burgles three big staying prizes then in, in 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 the spring of last year. Uh, horse goes up to a mark for 146. And I just think after the bet 365 Gold Cup, he was probably there, right? This is a grand national horse, and so he's been fiddling around this season, mixing up headgear, uh, mixing hurdles and, and fences. The shortest price he's gone off all season is 14 to 1. Here we arrive in the Grand National and it was lucky that he went up to 146 because he still only managed to squeak into the races. The cheek pieces and tongue tie combo is back on. Granted, that that, that was on in the um the the the, the Coral Trophy in, in Newbury, but still uh, it didn't go well then. But still, I think basically the whole season has been a preamble. I thought he showed great enthusiasm in, in Cheltenham on ground that wouldn't suit uh, suit him. Now, this is the concern. I well, I have a couple of concerns. One is that he's a hold up horse, it's difficult. In, um, in in this race uh, to, to make ground from off the pace and he probably wants better ground but I'm I'm not definitive about that because I, it might be that the better ground just coincided with the days he was wanted you know like this this is the ultimate uh, well, one of the one of the ultimate target horses and I just always with um, the Grand National I just look for stamina and particularly this year because I know the ground is deeper than it normally is I know that they should go at a more sensible pace but understandably the jockeys look at it and say it's very hard to make up ground from off the pace and it's just, they, they just go too hard they, they just always go too hard and you're going to have about six or seven horses actually stay and one of those is Kitty's Light uh, and just with, with, with his record in staying spring handicaps I think he's a knock on each way bet Okay Kitty's Light then at currently 11 to 1 uh, for Christian Williams and Jack Tudor and as a side note many of you will obviously know the story behind this horse trainer etc but if you follow him if you follow Christian Williams on Instagram you'll see an incredible clip of jockey Jack Tudor who of course is riding him on Saturday in the Grand National riding Kitty's Light as a two year old on the beach back in 2018 how it started versus how it's going is quite an incredible journey so they've known each other a long time what a story that would be but we're not here for stories we're not here for that Daryl we're here for winners Kitty's Light is in the mix for Brendan um, do you agree that only a handful in here are really going to stay if it, the race does go as Brendan's explained there oh yeah I, I, I did a runner by runner guide for this on the Betfair on the Betfair Bet website and I was just finding sort of dead wood for, for, use, for, better, for use of a better expression right, right through the field um, I, I suppose when I was doing the guide the one I came across that was just a massive prize is, is a horse that's actually unbeaten over these fences and that's Mac Totty at 66 is probably give you a, probably give you a bit of run for your money absolutely loves it here an 11 year old big ass really but um, you know I wouldn't put anyone off just a small couple of quid in there I thought there was a, a horse running off a mark in the 140s here that's potentially a 160 plus horse and that horse is meeting of the waters um, for Willie Mullins. This horse absolutely cruised through the Ultima handicap at Cheltenham Pine Shansko Classico. I just felt he lacked the gears really to sort of really try and go and pick him up at the finish. I think he's all about stamina. 
I think this has obviously been the plan for a long time for him. I think um, there's a good statistic about uh, horses coming out of Cheltenham. Um, four of the last five Grand National winners came from the Cheltenham Festival and eight of the last 16. So Cheltenham Festival is not a, a place to sort of ignore these sort of horses coming through. Um, I think he's I think he's a cracking bet. He's off a mark of 147. He cruised through Cheltenham like he was much, much better than that. Um, obviously, a, a good winner back in December at, uh, at Leopard's Tower and that Paddy Power Chase. Won't mind what the ground does. He's going to jump. He's going to travel. He's going to stay. I think he's. I think he's got a really good chance. The other one, obviously, is Vinilier, who, who absolutely broke my heart last year when Sean Flag- Flanagan came from a mile off the pace. If he can be ridden with a bit more, uh, a bit more prominently, I think he'll have a chance to to go um, one better this year as well. But meeting the waters would be my main bet of the race. And it's interesting, jockey bookings with the JP horses, because, of course, from the same yard as Meeting of the Horse, we have Iron Maximus, that's the pick mm. of Paul Townend, and then retained rider Mark Walsh is on Limerick Lace. But you don't know if this is chosen or told. You're not really sure. And you've got Danny Mullins, who, of course, has won on Meeting of the Waters before, so that does make sense. It's mm. just interesting, the jockey bookings, TC, but we don't read too much into that, do we? No. No, well, no, I don't. I don't, anyway. Um, I think... <laughs> I think if there is a big shortener now that Kitty's lights got in, I think it could be. Uh, I think it could be that one. I think Brendan could be on because of story or yeah. Um, now that it's in, I imagine all the feature writers will be writing their pieces for Saturday morning. Yeah, Christian Williams now, I, and I think ITV will build. But got, if you don't know the story, I mean, um, everyone knows it. I mean, we should say. I mean, Christian Williams' daughter is um, currently. Um, They've got leukemia and obviously is is kind of like uh, very poorly. Yeah, yeah, she's very poorly, and so I think there will be a lot of non racing interest in the story in the lead up to it. I think ITV will cover it. Obviously, they'll have to do it sensitively, but um, but there's that angle to it, uh, the media build up, and obviously once they get some momentum and people find out about the story, non-racing people, I think, you know, that could gather a pace. And as Brendan said, um, it got good form claims as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if that was, you know, we, we've seen horses in the Grand National in previous years come out of nowhere. Um, um, but if you remember one year, Munker Hostin went off favourite, having been about 40s at one point, but uh, there's a there's a big story behind that. We won't go into it. Anyway, um, if we're not on the same page with other people, you're not in the same library because I am going with Eclateria, who I'm embarrassed to say is the outsider of the field with a sports worker 80s, and right. 170 on the exchange is only two horses bigger than him currently. But I, I, I tipped him last time in the Ultima, and um, I suspected the worst when he went from 12s to 22 on the show in about two minutes and went off at a bet for a speed of 38. And I was happy enough in the race, but as soon as he was headed uh, about halfway, Rachel just didn't persevere at all, didn't it? Didn't hit him once. And I just thought something's gone wrong there, or also they're just like giving it a, giving it a stepping stone to, to entry. Now, the fact that he's here 32 days after what was on paper a woeful performance suggests that something might have been amiss. Uh, and I thought that previously, I think there was a, I think there was a fair bit of promise, even though there was only two finishes. So you, you're stretching credibility, uh, credibility here. But I thought there was enough promise in that. And when he was given a tender ride, and of course he's got some very good back form. So a uh, hail mary, uh, uh, like I said, 170 on the exchange. Um, that's the one I'm going to be going with. I'm, I'm also going to put my stable form to one side and probably go in a mile a mission as well at 20 to one on, on the exchange. Um, unbelievably, John McConnell has had more winners over jumps uh, in England um, since September than he has in Ireland. He's had an absolutely woeful time. He's had two winners since the end of September in Ireland over jumps. Um, he's had a, and he's had more over here so he's going for a real real terrible patch and he's and he's had a real bad patch on the flat as well because he's a dual purpose trainer but i think he's got a really really good profile obviously i think he he would have won the national one chase last year uh good second in the in the colin parker uh, in the in the, um uh, Carlo on his debut over an inadequate two mile four and ran a cracker in the cold gold trophy uh kept him fresh for this 
So hopefully the stable form won't be a factor uh, and he'll run a very big race. So the Hail Mary is a Clacteria. Uh, the more sensible head suggests Marla Misson, despite the stable form. Okay. Right, God, we've thrown everything at that. We've oh, got... no, we haven't. Well, we haven't thrown everything at it. You can't tease <laughs> the universe like that, Vanessa. You said you had a fancy for the Grand National. Yes. I do. I do. Noble Yates. Oh, Grant. Okay. Right. Yeah. Must have, Sorry, he nice. should stay. Well, he should stay anyway. That's a start, right? Well, I think as you. Oh, well, we know he stays. We know he stays. <laughs> <laughs> we know he stays. We know he can jump around. And uh, look, he ticks loads of boxes. You don't need me to outline it, but I just think, uh, you know, he's he's drifted out. He's currently twenty to one, and I know he's top weighted, but I don't know. I, I I fancy him in here, and his his price seems to be getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so yeah, I'll be with him on the day. Uh, now that will wrap up ITV's coverage. They will go out on the Grand National, but they will miss out on the McGull Novices Chase, which will see founder fifty take on Hercules de Soy um, and a few other sort of. Ooh, reverse, you're being a pain in the ass. Go away. Sorry, that's the dog. He wants to go on a walk. But also there's the grade two bumper that won't be on ITV either. So we will cover those in any other business. Um, TC, do you want to put up anything in either of those races? You can go first. All yeah. done. It's up to you. It's just any yeah. other business. Um, I think Master Chewy is uh, in the sixth race uh, in the two miler. I think that's overpriced at 12. In fact, he's about three points bigger on the exchange uh, as we speak. Uh, that's probably because he, he took a real tired fall uh, in the Arkle. But he, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't that far off the eventual winner, maybe three or four lengths off there, but... It, you know, he he landed okay, but he just like crumpled. It was it just suggests he had a very little left. But he travelled well throughout that race, and his back form suggests he's um, he's not a twelve to one shot in this, and not a fifteen point five sixteen poke anyway on the exchange. You've got um, he won the Wayward Lad, obviously beating Nickelback, and he's won here. He won here in the spring. Uh, sorry, in the in the autumn. And he just failed by three quarters of length to give three pound to Jello, who also runs in here. So I just think if that Cheltenham fall hasn't left a mark on him, I think he's got a lot more going for him than 12 to 1 suggests. Okay. If you want to have an interest in the bumper, although the sportsbook are ducking him at 10s and he's 14s elsewhere, I thought Ben Paul and no questions asked was quite interesting. Uh, obviously he had his problems because he won a point in April 2022. Didn't reappear till market raising recently, but I I thought that was I thought even though the time wasn't great and it was a small field, I thought it was quite impressive. Um, the third, the the second and the fourth haven't come out since, but the thirds come out and won well at Huntington, um, and I think Pauling won that race with Barters Hill a few years back as well. So not that mm. has any bearing whatsoever on on the horses' chance. But okay. uh, that just added it in. So, yeah, no questions asked. But if you're looking for a bet in the non ITV races, I would suggest Master Chewy is overpriced. Okay, beautiful. Uh, Daryl, would you like to quickly throw anyone else into the mix for those races? Well, uh, Illite Thompson has given that Arkle form a bit of a boost. I know it was over two and a half, but found a 50 uh, should be tough to beat, I think, in the, in the, um, in the novice stage, loads of pace in there. I hope they just give him a little bit more of a conservative ride. And uh, look, I keep it short because he is short, but Mr. Mega is a horse I've got a lot, a lot of time for. I think he's a very, very smart horse and they've skipped Cheltenham deliberately to wait for this. Um, no, uh, I don't think he's an Irish contender in there, is there, this year? I think he's a... Uh, uh, horse. Oh, yeah. I lied like then. Um, other than that one. But I, I think he's a very, very smart horse. I do. I think he's a very, very smart horse. His form has worked out well. You can tie it through to a few decent Irish horses, and uh, I think he's got loads more to come. So, And given the connections, they was obviously going to wait for Aintree and not go to Cheltenham. Um, so I shouldn't have backed him out any place for Cheltenham. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mega is currently 15 to 8 uh, for a price check right now in that bumper. Final word to you, Brendan. If you have any other business, please announce it now. If not, we will do naps. Afraid not. Nothing on those two races, Vanessa. Beautiful. Okay, nap time. Um, Daryl, I shall start with you. Your nap, please. Yeah, win in place. Jimmy DeSaul, 11 to 2 in the 155 at Aintree. For the ex-boyfriend. Love it. Okay. <laughs> uh, go on, the Jimmy. 
Uh, Brendan, your nap, please. Well, well, we'll see who wins between myself and Daryl because I will go win only, obviously. 155 yeah. entry, Caldwell Potter. See, that's why I've gone win and place because I do very much respect Caldwell Potter, of course. The respect for Caldwell Potter. And TC, finally to you, sir, is your nap on a grey? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking. I hope your ex-boyfriend wasn't Jimmy Dussault's owner, Ed Ware, because he, I think he sold thirty-two red for about forty million after after he left you. Um, <laughs> no, luckily, my ex-boyfriend's business exploits have gone rapidly downhill since. He ah, yeah. <laughs> all right, it's all is right. That, 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 that's, that pins and that uh, that pins and that effigy is working out well. Um, <laughs> yeah. You are a mystic Meg indeed, on a grey in the first at Aintree on Saturday. I got a handle on this. Wonderful. Right. Look, this has been a lot of fun. I'm so revved. I love the national. Um, guys, thank you very much for starters. Don't forget those extra place races in the 120, the 230, and six places in the national itself. Uh, as always, big weekend of sport, big weekend of horse racing action, the big one, the Grand National. Have fun with it but do it responsibly. And if you are getting involved with anything in terms of the extra place races and all of that, then as I say, read the T's and C's, do it responsibly, but good luck to you. We hope that you back the winner of the Grand National. That was Racing Only Better. <laughs>